Well, 10 days after Congress missed the deadline to come up with a deal on student loan interest rates, it looks like lawmakers are ready to sit down and broker a deal. Now, as a reminder, interest rates doubled on July 1st from 3.4% to 6.8%. But here's what the tentative agreement would do. Interest rates would be tied to a 10-year Treasury bond, meaning that Stanford, for Stanford student loans, students would pay the Treasury rate plus 1.8%. For federal parent plus loans, interest rates would be uh, ten, tied to that 10-year yield plus 4.5%. And all interest rates would cap at 8.25% for undergraduate students. So, does this agreement solve the problem and get America's higher education system back on track? Well, for more, I'm joined by Richard Fowler, a nationally syndicated radio host, and Natalia Abrams. She's the co-founder of the Student Debt Crisis. Natalia, I would like to start with you. Now, as the co-founder of the Student Debt Crisis, are you happy with this tentative deal that we are now hearing about? Not at all. We are. This is a last-minute temporary, or not temporary, excuse me, a last minute fix that we were actually unaware of until this morning. You know, yesterday the breaking news was they came to no deal. And this morning, here, behold, we have this deal that none of us wanted. We are putting, we are expecting future students to, to continue to pay the price. Um, it does not make sense why interest rates would not be 0.75 the way that Elizabeth Warren talks about, the same rate that the banks borrow at. Yes, it's okay for the next couple of years, but it's already projected in 2016 that graduate students will start to pay more than this, the, what they're paying now. So we do not think this is a great fix at all, and we also don't think that, that this deals with the existing trillion dollars that's currently out there. Now, Richard, this idea is similar to ones that um, both Republicans and Democrats were putting out before the July 1st deadline. So my first question to you is, why now? Well, I, I agree with you. I think, and I agree with Natalia, I think the, the fact that the president put a plan out that would make student, students subjected to the market was bad. The fact that Republicans put out a plan that would make students subjected to the market, that's also bad. Um, and the fact that the federal government is going to slate it to make $51 billion off of this is also bad when you have, when, so it's like students are in the negative going into the trillions and trillions of dollars of debt and the federal government happens to make $51 billion in profit to cut down, to, you know, get rid of our so-called deficit. So I, I think the problem that we have here is there's no consensus on the Hill to solve this problem and unfortunately while there is no consensus on the Hill and while people are more concerned about raising campaign cash, the American students continue to suffer. And Natalia, a lot of people uh, talk about this uh, student uh, loan hike, and they talk about the, the, the fact that it happened on July 1st. But do you think that we are losing track, as Richard says, of the larger overarching debate that uh, just because it's raising now, we still have $1 trillion in current student debt? Yeah, well, here's my diploma from UCLA. <laughs> right over there, that's where I went to school. And I wish that this was worth more. I went back to school when I was 26 years old to get a degree, to get a better job. And it didn't work. I, I have only $15,000 in debt. And I say only because the national average is 27000 But it's far too much for two years of an education. And I'm discouraged from going to graduate school, which I was accepted to, because I'm not about to take on another 60000 I'm part of the existing $1 trillion that's, or $1.2 that's out there. And we need to deal with that. That's the only way we're going to overhaul the system is if we actually focus on that $1.2 trillion. All of these interest rate hikes are such a small amount of the debate compared to the over 39 million borrowers with the existing debt. I think she's completely right. Uh, I think, you know, I, I tell when Sally Mae calls me or when the banks call me, I want them, I want to say, hey, listen, do you want my degree back? You can repossess it if you'd like. Because you take, and I think, and the, the face of student loan debt has been sort of skewed by those on the right to be lazy students who sit at home and drink beers at home with their parents. That's just not true. When you look at the statistics, it tells you a majority of borrowers are over 30. Uh, beyond the fact they're over 30, they're working full-time jobs. These are your teachers, your firefighters, your nurses, and your police officers. And while they're trying to protect the American people, they're being sort of be, being dealt a bad hand by the American government. 
Absolutely. Now, Richard, there is something else I wanted to talk to you about. Dealing with this tentative plan, if it does in fact pass and everyone agrees on it, it would retroactively take back that student debt hike that happened on July 1st. So this is not the first time that we have seen something retroactively not happen. My question to you is, what is the point of having deadlines if it can just be <laughs> retroactively taken back time and time again? I, I agree with you. I don't understand why this Congress has put in deadlines. I think it has everything to do with the fact that John Boehner is ineffective at being a leader, um, as well as I think, you know, we have to call, there, there, there's some Democrats that need to be called into the table on this too. You cannot sit here and say you're for the students and you're for young people and for millennials and we came out to vote for the president and Democrats in record numbers, um, and you don't see them protecting young people all the time as they should. And we should, I think, we saw Elizabeth Warren come out and protect young people. We've seen Sherrod Brown and, Ka and, Jill, and Gillibrand from the senator from New York come out and say we need to refinance the debt or deal with the debt, but that's just not good enough. Where are those Democrats in, for those Virginia Democrats, those Ohio Ohio Democrats, those middle-of-the-road Democrats who students voted for and young people voted for, understanding that this was supposed to be our hope and change. And so I think, but it's, but it's beyond that, though. Young people have to get involved in the process. It's very interesting considering the fact that right now student debt uh, overtakes credit card debt, and this is the country that uh, was supposed to be leading the world in terms of education, innovation, etc. Richard Fowler is the nationally syndicated radio host, and Natalia Abrams is the co-founder of Student Debt Crisis.